Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is Friday night, February the 12th, 9.30 p.m., and I'm just so happy to be here, and I'm just so happy you're here, and uh, yeah, this is Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. And which I truly believe it is. It's up to you. It's up to me. We have to, uh, if we want to see any change in this world, uh, we're going to have to do it ourselves. And we certainly can't rely on other people to do it. So that's why I, I titled the show uh, Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. So, yeah, I'm so glad that you can be here. Um, we're going to be covering the topic tonight. We're going to finish up with Dealing with the Effects of Trauma a self-help guide, and this I found on uh, SAMHSA's National Mental Health Information Center at http uh, forward slash forward slash mentalhealth dot SAMHSA, S-A-M-H-S-A dot gov. And you can go right on their website and pull this article up. It's called Dealing with the Effects of Trauma, a Self-Help Guide. I really like it. Um, We were reading from this article on Monday and Wednesday, and I thought we'd just finish it up tonight and then we'll take a look at uh, some coping lists from Michael C. Irving. Um, he's a psychotherapist and a, and a sculptor who was, uh, he's the founder and um, you know the, the uh, creator of the Child Abuse Monument up here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And my friend uh, Linda Lee is, was a, a participant in that, uh, in that Child Abuse Monument. She was uh, one of the participants out of, out of Hundreds. I'm not sure how many people actually participated, but we'll we'll go into uh, take a look at that article too because it's great. Um, we're talking about trauma. Trauma is huge, and so you know this is not a professional show. Uh, it's not designed to replace professional help. I merely just um, want to be a voice and and just spread resources and and share what I find on the web that I think is just really helpful for people. I know it's helpful for me. And so, you know, it's not a professional show. Uh, it's not, I don't have any professional counseling certificates or professional therapy certificates. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a therapist or a counselor. I'm just a person who I pay. I actually pay to do this show, and I do it because I really care about people. And I think that there's so many people suffering out here. I know so many people myself, and I have known so many people in the past um, throughout my whole entire lifetime who have been suffering with these issues and it's just so important that we all know that there that we're not alone and that there's help and we can get help we just have to reach out and we have to make sure we just keep the hope alive keep reaching out and um you know it's just so important that we do because you know there's I didn't really reach out ever and uh, I just had some close friends that knew what was going on in my life and um throughout the years and I never thought about reaching out because I was actually afraid to, and really I was afraid to um, to go public with my story, and I didn't do that until just last September. So it's only been a short while for me, actually it was October, so it's been a short uh, while for me too to come out public with my story, And um, but it's been such a healing journey. Um, I really felt that as long as it was going to do some good for people, it's worth it. It's worth putting myself out there in my story because... I don't care how uncomfortable it is. It's so important that we stand up for we stand up for human rights, we stand up for child rights, and we really have to make a difference in this world. We have to we have to work towards uh, education, awareness, and prevention of child abuse and human rights abuses because this is why so many people are suffering right now. And um, so trauma just goes right along with it. It's just part of it. And um, trauma, you know, trauma actually people that are you know live normal childhoods and had great childhoods uh, can experience trauma too. So it's something that affects us all, uh, you know, from anything from natural disasters to car accidents, uh, health issues can be very traumatic, death in the family, uh, you know, losing people, losing people in your lives, divorce, uh, just all kinds of stuff like that can lead, uh, you know, to people to have so, so many uh, issues with stress and stress-related issues like post-traumatic stress disorder and all kinds of problems, depression and whatnot, and it's all kind of brought about by a lot of it by trauma, and so that's why I thought we'd cover this article. And if you're under the age of 18, uh, please make sure that you listen to this with someone who has a good head on their shoulders that you trust, maybe a friend, a counselor, or someone who's older who who might be able to sort of give you some um, a little bit of background information on what we're talking about, just in case, because. The, the subjects of abuse and, and stuff like that are very uh, sensitive. You know, most people find them very hard to listen to and to talk about. And so that's why I just ask that everyone listen at your own discretion. Make sure you're in a safe place when you're listening to this so that it doesn't trigger you and, 
if you think it's going to trigger you, please turn it off. It's not worth it. And, um, you know, and if you're a young person, you want to get someone to listen to this with you so that you can, if you have questions, you won't just go away going, oh, what was that all about? I don't quite understand that. And um, it's just so important that everybody know that, you know, it, it's just a good idea to, to be in a safe place when you're listening to this, right? So we'll just get right on with it. I want to finish this. We were talking Wednesday night on the healing journey, and this was, you know, how to and how to go about getting on a healing journey. I like this article. They actually said, you know, it's not to replace professional help, but they do, you know, they it's a nice um, article, you know, for a self-help guide just to give people a bit of information about uh, how to go about healing from trauma and dealing with trauma and where to go to get help. And I just love this article. And also that, you know, we can heal from trauma and that we just have to keep going. And there's ways to, to cope with, with uh, all this stuff. And so the healing journey we looked at on Wednesday night, that was, you know, learn to know and appreciate your body and, you know, um, set boundaries and limits that feel right to us, you know, say no to anything that you don't want in your life and, and you know, think about what you really need in your life. And like for me, if you know, to make good decisions for myself, I need to really think about what I want in life um, and that way what I need out of life and people so that I that I know what the boundaries are and what my, what the limits are and so that I can actually be proactive in my own uh, healing journey and set my own boundaries and say no that's not going to be good for me or yes this will be great for me we need to actually take a look really deep uh, close look in at what we really need and sometimes I think you know a counselor or a therapist or a support group is really good for that I have never had any professional counseling, probably should have many, many years ago. I walked out a lot of my healing, thank God. But I tell you what, I still have times where I find, um, you know, uh, the, the the memories come back and, you know, I'll have uh, not, not interrupting flashbacks, but I'll be thinking about something and it'll come back. And, you know, I wouldn't mind uh, uh, some counseling myself, so I'm not beyond that. And I do promote professional help, counseling, therapists, uh, uh, even medication if necessary for people um, because we all deserve to have a good life. So whatever it takes to have a good life, that's what we should do. And, uh, you know, if no one's in your life, if no one is, is, is there to tell you this, like no one was in mine, um, to tell you that, you know, we all deserve a good life and that we have to seek it out and keep searching, uh, then you're just going to keep suffering in silence and like I did. I never reached out and I just sat in, in my own kind of little pit of despair and, and it wasn't even created by me. It was created by other people and I was forced to endure it. So that's the whole issue. A lot of us are suffering from stuff like that and uh, it's good to have a support group and, you know, a lot of times family just isn't there for us and friends just can't be there for us. So, you know, there are groups out there that you can get involved with. I'm involved with quite a few. I can't even name them off. I mean, I'm probably in at least five groups, support groups, with wonderful people on them. I count them my friends, my dear friends. And, you know, if I'm having trouble and, and I just need to talk, I know that I can go on these support groups and I can just send a message and I will have so much support just like that because they have all been there uh, in similar situations and they know what it's like. So they're there to support you and they're, they're there to kind of help you get through it. And then professional counseling or therapy good idea for a lot of us right that just need to walk through some stuff and learn how to cope and uh, it's just so good you know we can have a good life and that's why I'm doing this show I'm paying money to do this show to tell you that we can have a good life because I know it's a fact it's true and but we have to stay on it and a lot of times people won't reach out to us because they don't realize the situation we've been through and uh, even if they did know they might not know how to um, how to help us so they might not say anything right we need to reach out and just keep reaching out to find whatever help we can get that's going to work for us. And everybody's different, right? So what works for me might not work for you, and what works for you might not work for me. But that's okay because we're all different, and uh, we all we all need different things. So I just think it's so good. Um, learn to be a good advocate for yourself. They said, ask what you want and deserve. Ask for what you want and deserve. Work toward getting what you want and need for yourself. So I, I love this article here. You know, as far as like education goes, uh, maybe getting yourself uh, like for for instance for me health issues taken care of. Um, you know, maybe 
uh, going back to school or, you know, deciding whether or not you would like to, to get married or, you know, just uh, making some good decisions for ourselves, right? And build our self-esteem. It says, you are a very special and wonderful person. That's what they put in here. And I love this article just for that very reason. Um, you deserve all the best things that life has to offer. Remind yourself of this over and over again. I do this on a daily basis. Um, and it might not even be consciously. It could be subconsciously. Some days I don't think too much about it. But most of the time, I am doing self affirmations and I think a lot of that a lot of my healing is due to that because I finally um realized I started to love myself instead of hate myself and I started to love life instead of hate life and so I kind of did like a backwards flip you know I I well, I hated so many things I had a lot of hatred and anger in my heart and it was really destroying me and I knew it was and all of a sudden you know I went from that to you know love in my heart and really loving myself and knowing that that all this stuff that happened to me was not my fault and that I deserve to have a good life too and that you know so I go through all this stuff and it does help me feel better because it, you know it's true it's so absolutely true and you know we do uh deserve the best in life just like everyone else and so we want to we want to to make sure that we tell ourselves these things and and maybe do some journaling about what you want in life and stuff right and it says um Work to establish harmony with your family or the people you live with. Have fun and interesting activities with them. Uh, listen to them without being critical, just like like we would like people to listen to us without without being critical, right? And work on learning to communicate with others so they can easily understand what you mean. Um, you know, for instance, like saying, I feel upset rather than accusing the person or I feel sad. Like um, just to, to learn how to communicate how we're feeling and stuff, especially if we have someone in our life who's a really good a listener and who's got a good shoulder like you know that we can lean on um we can really draw from them because if they're there for us that means that they're there they're there for us and so you know you want to get some trustworthy people in your life i know that i had a hard time trusting people for for a long long time i didn't really trust anybody and because i've been burned by so many people you know and it's like um i started to realize i thought you know i want to be trusted so I'm going to have to start learning to trust people, and just like I would want them to trust me. And that was a big issue for me, because I wanted people to trust me too. And so I thought, you know, how am I going to do this? I thought, well, okay, I'm going to have to start trusting people. But I do always follow my gut instincts, and I think it's very important to do that. Um, you know, you and if someone's not trustworthy and they prove themselves not trustworthy, then they don't belong in my life, I'll tell you that. Um, because I only I don't let anyone abuse me ever uh now as an adult because it's my choice. And so it's so important, you know, uh, to find some good people who have uh, who are a good influence and are really going to you know, be a positive um resource in your life, right? You want people that are going to be there for you. And it's so hard to find people like that, but you can do it. I found about 400 of them. Every day it just grows and grows. There's so many people who I just love and adore and are probably listening to this show. Um, thank you so much, friends, because you mean everything to me. And I thank you for being here for me. And I thank you for your friendship and your support. So we're going to start reading. Uh, we, we left off on this in this one section here. Using the activities in this section, things you can do to help yourself feel better. Make lists of things that will help you keep yourself well and will help you to feel better when you are not feeling well. Include lists. So there's all these lists that we can do that we can make when we're not so that we can pull out these lists when we're not feeling well or if things are just uh, becoming a bit too much. And they can help us to... Um, feel better, right? And just to feel better about ourselves and about life. And I just think that's great, like coping lists and whatnot, right? So they said here, I'm just reading right from the page. Uh, this is, uh, we have about 15 minutes left here. So we'll finish reading this. To remind yourself of things you need to do every day. That's why you would you would make a list so that we could remind ourselves of the things we need to do every day. They said like getting a half hour of exercise and eating three healthy meals and also those things that you may not need to do every day. But if you miss them, they will cause stress in your life. For example, buying food, paying bills, or cleaning your home. Which, you know, we're all, we all know how it is. We get busy and things don't get done. And before we know it, uh, you know, we're paying bills, we're behind on things. And before you know it, it adds stress to our lives, right? So if we can kind of put some of that stuff, uh, get a grip, get a handle on some of that, that stuff wouldn't be stressing us out, right? Um, and, and here's another one. Uh, we would make a list of events and situations that may make you feel worse if they come up, like a fight with a family member, health care provider, or social worker, getting a big bill or loss of something important to you. Then list 
uh, things to do, like relax, talk to a friend, play your guitar. If things if these things happen, so you won't. Uh, start feeling, oh, oh, if these things happen, so you won't start feeling badly. So we can make a list of uh, things that we like to do to help us to, like, relax, like maybe talk to a friend, play your guitar, they suggested. Um, we would make a list so that we could pull this out if we had a bad experience, like a fight with a family member or maybe just a, an issue with a health care provider or a social worker, getting a big bill, things that would just come up in our lives that are that would cause that stress or cause that trauma to kind of come back, Right. And we could make a, a list and pull it out if we were having a bad day and say, this is what helps me relax when I'm having this kind of a day. And go through these lists and actually we would start to feel better, right? It says we could make a list of early warning signs that indicate uh, you are starting to feel worse. Like always feeling tired, sleeping too much, overeating, dropping things and losing things. Then list things to do like get more rest, take some time off. Arrange an appointment with your counselor. Cut back on caffeine to help yourself feel better. So there's, so we can, there's lists that we can create uh, to sort of uh, counteract or you know to, to, to take care of those type of things, right? So I think it's a great idea. And then we can make a list of signs that things are getting much worse, like you are feeling very depressed, you can't get out of bed in the morning, or you feel negative about everything. Then list things to do that will help you feel better quickly, like get someone to stay with you, Spend extra time doing things you enjoy and contact your doctor. So these are things that could be on our list if we were noticing that we were starting to get depressed and, and we couldn't get out of bed in the morning or you know feeling very negative about everything. And we could have a list that we would pull out and we'd say, this is the list that works for me when I'm feeling like this. So it's a great idea. Of information, we can make a list of information that can be used by others if you become un unable to take care of yourself or keep yourself safe, such as signs that indicate you, you need their help. Uh, who you want to help you, give copies of this list to each of these people. The names of your doctor, counselor, and pharmacist, all prescriptions and over-the-counter medications things that others can do that would help you feel better or keep you safe, and things you do not want others to do or that might make you feel worse, right? So, yeah, we can make a list just in case we think, okay, I'm not going to be able to handle this, so I'm going to make a list for, for uh, some special people in my life that care, truly care about me, and I just pray that you have someone in your life that does, and that uh, you can give this list to them, and you can say, this is the names of my doctor, my counselor, this is my pharmacist and my prescriptions that I take, and uh, you hang on to this list, and then if I become, you know, so down that I can't look after myself, or I'm not doing what I need to do to take care of myself, then you can come over and you can, you can uh, um, get me some help, right? I think that's a great idea, right? Because we know people are suffering out there with major, major issues, um, and, you know, it's so good to have, I, I wish everybody had someone in their life that would be able to be there for them. And, you know, so many times we don't. And But that's why we have to keep reaching out. There's no law that says we can't keep reaching out. And that's the whole, that's what I say. Um, just keep walking it out. Keep reaching out because you're bound to run into somebody who cares for you very much and wants to be that person in your life, right? It's so important. Barriers to healing. We'll continue on here. Are there any things you are doing that are getting in the way of your healing, such as alcohol or drug abuse, being in abusive or unsupportive relationships, self-destructive behaviors, such as blaming and shaming yourself and not taking good care of yourself? Think about the possible negative consequences of these behaviors. For instance, if you get drunk, you might lose control of yourself and the situation and be taken advantage of. If you overeat, the negative consequences might be weight gain, uh, poor body image, and poor health. You may want to work on changing these behaviors by using self-help help books, working with a counselor, joining a support group, or attending a 12-step program. And I think that's so important. Barriers to healing. I mean, you know... It, that's just the issue, right? We, uh, in order to walk out our healing, we have to kind of look at what's causing a, a, what could be a barrier to that healing, you know. And that's a big reason why I, I quit smoking cigarettes, you know, like 14 months ago. And you know, um, I ran into a stressful time right around Christmas time. There, started smoking again. Now I have to work on quitting again because I really want to be a non-smoker. So it's you know, if things like this affect everybody, and you know, not just people who are you know, child abuse survivors. This is the type of thing that can happen to anyone. And so, you know, we need to look at these, what these barriers are, 
and find out exactly what they are, the root and the cause of them, and then look at uh, look at kind of getting rid of them, you know what I mean, and replacing them with some good stuff, like, you know, supportive relationships, getting out of an abusive relationship and getting getting into a good support group or finding some trustworthy friends and who can really be there for us, right? And then, you know, uh, alcohol and drug abuse, get out, you know, get into a 12-step program, get some counseling and support, right, because you do deserve it. And uh, moving forward on your healing journey, if you, are, if you are now about to begin working on recovering from the effects of trauma, or if you have already begun this work and are planning to continue making some changes based on what you have learned, you will need courage and persistence along the way. You may experience setbacks. From time to time, you may get so discouraged that you feel like you want to give up. This happens to everyone. Notice how far you've come. Appreciate even a little progress. Do something nice for yourself and continue your efforts. You deserve an enjoyable life. It says, always keep in mind that there are many people, even famous people, who have had traumatic things happen to them. They have worked to relieve the symptoms of this trauma and have gone on to lead happy and rewarding lives. And it says, you can too. So I love this article. And they have resources and stuff on there, uh, www.samhsa.gov. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, that's SAMHSA, Center for Mental Health Services. And, you know, that's a great website. They have all kinds of good information on there. And it's just so true, you know. We might, we might, as we're walking out our, our healing journey, run into uh, setbacks, right? And we might feel like we're not getting anywhere. We might be, like, ready to give up. And I know, you know, I've talked to people about this in the past. I, I've Actually, I've talked to people just recently, you know, in the past few months, I'd say, and they, you know, we all seem to have similar uh, issues with uh, uh, walking out or healing. And but it's good to have the support because we can talk about it. Right, it makes a huge difference. But people, you know, we often do run into these brick walls, you know, and it just doesn't seem to be helping. And um, that's when we have to say, you know what, we cannot give up. We cannot give up. We just have to keep, keep going and keep looking for that help. Keep whether it's a counselor, a, a psychologist a mental health professional, um, a prof- you know, a professional therapist, or a support group if you don't trust therapy. You know, get into a support group where there's just survivors or, or people who are dealing with trauma, like, you know, just average ordinary people who are dealing with trauma. Um, there's support groups out there for just about everybody, I'd like to say, because I've seen so many. And um, there has to be, there'll be one person on there who will just touch your life. And, you know, they'll be there for you. And so, you know, you're having a hard time. You can get a hold of them and say, look, this is not working. What have you found that works for you? And then people, you know, they share ideas, they share resources. And they say, well, look, this worked for me, but this didn't help me so much, but it might help you. And so everybody wants everybody to heal on those sites. You know, they all want people to, to make it because they're survivors themselves. And just like myself, I want you to make it. And I want you to, to know that you deserve a good life and that you can have it. And we all can have a good life. I don't. There, there's no reason in the world why we can't make the best of our situation, right? No matter what the situation is. We have to be able to, to enjoy this life we've been given. It's a gift. And, you know... Um, for years and years, I didn't think like that, and so now I'm I'm thinking, yeah, we do deserve it, and every single child out there does, and every single man and woman out there does, and so we have to make it happen ourselves, right, in your own life, in your own world, and so you know, just keep reaching out, and you will see that that there's so much help out there. That's what I'm starting. That's what I'm I'm doing. You know, as I've been walking out this this whole thing, I've been doing a study for I study for. Um, MRU. I'm a student at MRU, and I I was involved in international community development, child rights, human rights, and I started looking around, and I thought, you know, there's so much help out here. I had no idea. I would have accessed it many long time ago, but I never had researched it out, and I just sat around and suffered for years in silence. And you know, with the help of a few friends through the you know my in in my past, um, and and some of the words that they told me and gave me, you know, stayed in my heart, and I realized that. I did need to keep going and, and possibly without those people, uh, you know, in my teen years and stuff, having run into those people, I, I might not be here today. But some people told me some good words and they told me I deserved to have a good life and I did not deserve to be treated the way that I was. And um, it really stuck with me. And they told me I was going to have to forgive, I was going to have to move on, and I was going to have to be responsible for my own happiness because obviously my family couldn't do it. 
So, um, you know, that stuck with me, and I saw that, you know, they cared very much for me, and, um, you know, that's what it takes. It, it just takes someone to tell you, you deserve a good life. So that's why I'm here tonight, and, you know, just to tell you that, yes, you do deserve a good life. We all do, and we, but we, we have to take, we have to actually be proactive and take the steps uh, necessary to have a good life, right? And um, it's, a, it's a just something that we have to keep working on all the time, right? So important. Well, here's a great website. This is um, this is off www.irvingstudios.com forward slash child abuse survivor monument. You can also type right into your browser child abuse monument. It comes up. It's a great website. It's um, Michael C. Irving. He's a psychotherapist and sculptor. He's um, he he has a great website and he has some awesome information on there about child abuse. There's a create and use personalized coping lists and this is on the self care tab. Like you can go on the website, click under self care, bring it down and it says adult survivors of child abuse and there's this uh, uh, create and use personalized coping lists. Well, there's all these coping lists that we we can use to help us get through. Uh, some of these stressful times and you know for instance if we're in a crisis there's coping lists for crisis uh, when you're having crisis in your life there's coping lists for uh, just daily activities just getting through the regular daily grind Uh, there's coping lists on boundaries and coping lists on managing stress and all kinds of good stuff I did read this out maybe a couple months ago and um, I think we'll take another possibly take another look at it uh, just depending on how much time we have um, this weekend um, or maybe next week sometime. Um, but I've got about three minutes left and I want to cover some resources before we go. Um, and I, you know, I just really can't say it enough. Just keep reaching out and keep that hope alive. ASCA, uh, Adult Survivors of Child Abuse, this is a Morris Center uh, program at www.ascasupport.org. And this is Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. It's an international self-help support group program designed specifically for adult survivors of neglect, physical, sexual, and or emotional abuse. It's a community-based self-help support group. There's provider-based self-help support groups. And it's just there's a Survivor to Thriver workbook, which I really love, and I think it's great. I've, I've actually looked into it. Um, good website. I really like it. Uh, child Abuse, this is Dream Catchers for Abused Children. I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dreamcatchers for Abused Children. I'm so happy to stand with them and just to, 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 pro, just to promote awareness and prevention of child abuse and just to, their mission. And I just, love, I just love what they do. I love their website. Type right into your browser, dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com. They're on Twitter. They're on YouTube. They're on LinkedIn. Um, they're on MySpace. And, uh, you know, you can find all the links and stuff. They're on Facebook, um, you know, huge on Facebook. And they're just everywhere. And, well, please check their, their website out. They have some great information on there. And then there's Dream, Dream Catchers Talk Radio. Uh, Tuesday night will be uh, the show number two. I didn't make it for show number one. We had technical difficulties. Uh, Donna Shear hosted that, and she is the host of Dream Catchers Talk Radio, author and president of Dream Catchers for Abused Children. Be sure and check that out. We, uh, you know, you can find that at uh, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Dream Catchers, and you can you can tune in every Tuesday night. Um, for now, that's the schedule. Tuesday night, and we're going to be on. And um, I sure hope you can join us because we're going to have some great information. I'm co-hosting, and thank I'm just so thankful to them for this opportunity. It's an opportunity of a lifetime, and I thank them for every single bit of it. Um, yeah, this is it's just a, a great, great resource, and I love what they do, and I'm happy to stand with them. Um, there's Suicide Crisis and Suicide Prevention at www.suicide.org. Kevin Caruso, this is a great website. Suicide is never the answer. Reach out and get some help, and you do, you don't never 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 give up. You know that's Kevin Caruso. He says never. I will never give up on you. He says I love you all, and uh, you want to be, get on that website and get some help. And you know if you're really you know if you're living in an abusive situation and your and your life is being threatened, you dial nine one one. Do not uh, do not take that lightly. If your life is being threatened and you're in an abusive home or domestic violence situation, you get some help. You dial nine one one. You know that you do not deserve to be. Um, abused and you certainly don't abuse you don't deserve to have your life taken away from you and we see people in the paper always too late because they're gone already you know their lives have been taken children uh, adults people are being killed in, in these homes abusive homes and you know 
You don't want that to happen to you, so you make the proper phone call. Dial 911, get yourself safe. And, you know, if, you're ha- if you know someone who's being abused, make sure you make the proper phone call. If you know a child, uh, if you suspect, even suspect slightly that a child is being abused, you could save a child's life. Make the proper phone call. And that's, you know, it's so important. I just can't say it enough. So everyone, I'm so glad that you could be here with me tonight. I thank you all for joining me because it's Friday night. You could be anywhere. And if you're listening to this show, I thank you so much for your support. And I just hope that you're well. I'll be back on on Sunday uh, for two shows and... um, You can just check the schedule there, and I'll be back on next week as well. So have a great night, everybody. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. If you need to get a hold of me, please do. You can send me a message on blogtalkradio.com, or you can get a hold of me on Facebook, various places, MySpace. And um, I just, my heart is with you all. Thank you so much. Good night.